Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me today is Shirley Jenright. She is the chair of a committee called Communities of Trust here in Fairfax County. Thank you so much for joining me, Shirley. Thank you for having me, my pleasure. So I learned about Communities of Trust not that long ago. It's not uh, an organization that's been around for a long time, but you sort of spearheaded this. And I'd love for our viewers to kind of understand the decades of, of work, that community work that you have done in this area that brought you to the place where you recognized a need for this kind of organization. Okay, well, I'm very <coughs> active in civil rights movement, and for two terms, I was the president of the Fairfax County NAACP. There were issues, of course, with the killing of black, unarmed black men by police officers. And when the incident happened in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, I went to, actually I called Chief Rossler, and I asked him, what did we have in place, or what do we need to put in place in Fairfax so we would not have a Ferguson in Fairfax County. Uh, his suggestion was that we spoke with, speak with uh, Chairman Boulevard, and she suggested that we uh, include Chief Bowers, who was at the previous Fairfax County Fire Chief, and Sheriff Kincaid. All of us met, discussed what my concern was, and this is how the Communities of Trust Committee was established. Chairman, Chairman asked, well, what do you think we should do? And my suggestion was, let's pull some community leaders and organizations together to address the issues in Fairfax and let us communicate and work together in trying to resolve those issues. At the same time, um, President Obama had established his commission on 21st century policing, and there were a lot of recommendations uh, out of that commission. At the time his recommendation came out, however, we had already, our com Communities of Trust Committee had already ex completed a lot of those. But we were in line with what the president wanted us to do as far as community policing is concerned. But it was also important that we get all of our law enforcement, the fire department, the, well, fire department's not law enforcement, but the um, sheriff's office and the police department working together. And then we reached out to the uh, state patrol to see if they would like to come on board and work with us in resolving issues surrounding law enforcement. Then we decided, well, let's expand it to all public safety. Mm -hmm. So right now, the Communities of Trust Committee has gone beyond our initial task of building trust between communities and law enforcement to actually working with all of public safety agencies to figure out how do we resolve some of the issues uh, facing public safety. You know, I find it interesting that, that there has been a, a lot of discord with law enforcement over the seeming overreach and, and use of force where it's not necessary, especially with people of color, but firefighters generally rank as one of the most trusted professions in the United States. And it's interesting, the relationship between firefighters and law enforcement, they work closely together in a lot of cases, but one is so highly admired and the other one is now viewed with a great deal of suspicion. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to me that you are bringing them under the umbrella of how can we present to the public, you know, the fact that we are a team. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of vision in seeing that it has to start there. But you know, clearly schools are part of this as well because a lot of the young people perceive law enforcement mm -hmm. not in a very positive way. That is correct. And what we have in our uh, committee, uh, we have a representative from the school system that's on there. We have someone from the uh, uh, Red Cross that's a member, the FBI is a member of the committee as well as an individual uh, from the Department of Justice and he actually comes down from Philadelphia wow. to participate in the meetings. So whenever there's an issue that we can't resolve or data that we need, we have people around the table that we can reach out to. Uh, when the Communities of Trust Committee was initially started, the fire department, the police department, sheriff department were all doing their own thing. And some of their things were the same. 
you know, we just were not working together and doing it. But once the Communities of Trust Committee was established, it actually built a bond between the, the departments and those individuals that work within those departments. You know, so when we have an event now, it's like a big reunion, you know, because they haven't seen each other maybe since the last event. Right. So that helps us to resolve some of the concerns that we have, even though the fire department is not law enforcement. When we're talking about an issue like the use of force, um, that there was a big issue in Fairfax County around, the fire department had also a voice around the table when we were discussing that. What are some of the things that we need to do? Why is that perception this way? Right. And what do we need to do to change that perception? And of course, that's what Communities of Trust is about. So the one way of doing that is actually we need to go back and start working within the communities. You know, we need to change the way our younger kids l review and look at police officers. So we have programs, we, uh, we do a public safety day, and we've done that for about three years now. Where it's like, a, to me, I call it a little carnival with all of law enforcement, mm -hmm. where we have the food, we have all law enforcement brings the trucks, the cars, we play games with the uh, kids for about four hours. So it actually gives them an interaction with law enforcement. And now we have what they call PAL, police at schools and police at lunch. And that was initially started uh, by the commander of Mount Vernon, uh, Matt Owens. And the police officers will go in at lunchtime and help to open milk cartons for some of the kids. And then they have an opportunity to actually sit down and talk to some of the children. So now we're expanding that to other schools within Fairfax County. But where it started with uh, Mount Vernon and one school and just the police department, now we have the sheriff department, the fire department, and the state patrol is going to be involved in the PAL program. That's fantastic because I do think, you know, children get a, a lot of uh, their worldview from things like the media. And exactly. the media, there has been, since even before Ferguson, but certainly with Ferguson, this idea that excessive use of force is the norm. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's not. It's, it's you know, it's, it's they are isolated incidents. They are incredibly unfortunate and, and it makes it difficult for law enforcement to be seen as trusted members of a community. Right. I think all of us now are a little, a little more afraid mm -hmm. of interactions with the police. And you certainly don't want children to feel that the policemen are not the people you should be calling when you need help. Exactly. And what we do also when we're interacting with the kids, we talk to them about how they should interact with the kids. And I know uh, Chief Rossler has had training for his law, law enforcement officers on um, this de-escalation mm -hmm. uh, and the racial biases, implicit and explicit biases. That training has been held with all of his officers and to include some of the um, sheriff's uh, officers. But we have um, things that happen outside of the community impacts Fairfax. So while we're working on building trust, something might happen in Baltimore. Right. with a police officer and, and one of the kids, then that pushes us back a little because then we get, well, why should we trust the police? You see what they did in Florida. You see what they did in California. Well, we're not in Florida and California. Yes, we're watching what they're doing. And yes, I share those videos with the, the police department when I see them in case they haven't seen them. Say so these are the things that we don't want to do here in Fairfax. But then there are also videos that I get where the police officers are doing some great things. I share those as well. These are some of the things that we want to do in Fairfax. But I also ask, you know, our community, share with me when there is an issue that you have. What are some of the things that you think could improve the relationship between law enforcement and, and the community? What can you do to help? Because it's not just all on the police. That's right. You know, right. so we have a responsibility as well. Well, you know, it's interesting because what you're talking about, this, this collaboration among public safety officials and trying to get the community to engage in a positive way, 
But we are very fortunate to have Sheriff Kincaid mm -hmm. who brought this idea of diversion first into our county. Right. And, and the de-escalation of interactions and the, the assessment of, of what's really happening and how those interactions need to be handled more effectively. Mm -hmm. I think we're very fortunate to have her perspective and her leadership on that. I know that Gian Ward, who's a delegate in the House of Delegates in 2016, introduced legislation that was passed about adding um, how to interact with police as part of the driver's education curriculum in Virginia public schools. Now that was 2016, and to me that really showed that people were paying attention mm -hmm. to what we can do proactively, like before we have to get to de-escalation and diversion, right. how do we help especially young people mm -hmm. learn a better way of conducting themselves in a situation that might be fraught, might might be unfamiliar, might make them feel in danger. Mm -hmm. And th those are conversations that we're asking churches to have. And of course, uh, being a black parent and having a black son, uh, conversations we have to definitely have is how you interact with a police officer. What we do tell them is that if you ask a question, just answer the question. You can always respond to the questions and you can file a complaint later. Right. You know, and that helps to de-escalate situations. But I don't, since I've been um, the chair of the Communities of Trust Committee and when I was the president of the NAACP, we did get quite a few complaints. I don't see that happening anymore. So it tells me that we are doing something positive in Fairfax County. I know Chief, uh, Chairman Boulevard established the uh, Commission for the Review of Police Policies and Procedures. Mm -hmm. And there were lots of recommendations came out there, especially when it re related to the use of force. Mm -hmm. uh, and the police department is still implementing some of those um, recommendations. And we have recruitment, a lot of um, concerns that we get is we don't have officers that look like the community, in the community. And, and diversity really is a very big issue and it's something that requires intentionality mm -hmm. as far as bringing people into the classrooms who are diverse and into our public safety. And when we get back from this break, we are going to further discuss with Shirley Genwright what Communities of Trust is doing to help foster a better relationship between people in our community and people in public safety. My twin brother Jacob has an autism spectrum disorder. I remember one moment after being at school all day, I remember him getting into the car just bawling and saying, Mom, I have no friends. Why don't I have any friends? It broke my heart. That was the moment when I realized that I needed to do something about this. I needed to make a difference in his life. And I knew that if I could help him find a friend, I could help teach other people that including people with differences is the right thing to do. That was the inspiration behind my nonprofit score friend. Educating people to include people with differences is so important because when Jacob's included, he feels like he can succeed in life and he feels like he actually has a purpose. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me.
Welcome back to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me today is Shirley Jenright. She is the chair of Communities of Trust here in Fairfax County. Thank you so much for your time, Shirley. Thank you. So tell me a little bit more about some of the things that the Communities of Trust are involved with. You're, you've been a catalyst for starting conversations, but you're also an integral part now of events and meetings and bringing people together in very specific ways. Right. Uh, one of the things that we did, we. Uh, the big issue on immigration. So there are a lot of concerns with how the police department and the sheriff department was interacting with ICE and what were some of the right, rights of the individuals if they were stopped by ICE and some of the resources in the county. So the Communities of Trust hosted two uh, events on immigration, Know Your Rights. And we did um, a video of it. So, so those individuals who did not attend uh, could actually go back and look at it and find out what happens if a parent is picked up but there are children left here in school. Now what happens to those kids? So we actually did a forum on that and it's online so people can still go back and find out what they need to do. Can those find those resources on communitiesoftrust.com? Yes. Okay, yes. wonderful. Yes. Also we had uh, Recently, we worked on the, and I chaired a committee to review the school resource officer's memorandum of understanding, which is uh, the policy between the school and the police department. And as many of you know, we have school resource officers uh, in our secondary and high schools. And they're responsible for actually uh, safety in the schools. And there was a big concern around the fact that uh, police officers or the SROs were actually too much involved in the discipline. So the policy was uh, in involved by 17 community organizations uh, that actually looked at the policy and provided input to Chief Rossler and Dr. Braban to update the MOU. The MOU was uh, signed by the school board, approved by the school board in June and it will be reviewed once a year. And if there are no, any changes need to be made, then Dr. Brayman and Chief Rossler will make that. And I think, that's, I think that's really important because you, you point to something very specific regarding discipline versus safety. Right. And I think a lot, and it was, I think it probably varied from school to school because without a very clear cut policy, a lot of decisions are made mm -hmm. on the ground in a particular school. So, more clear-cut guidance really is very helpful right. for people to understand where you draw the line mm -hmm. and where an SRO And actually, involved. we had um, the Department of Criminal Justice Services out of Richmond had established a model, so MOU for SROs, and we use that model. And, but what they're doing now, we have provided them a copy of our policy, which is very much expanded past more, there. More robust. But then you Very had so, so many right. members of the community involved. You know, we understand, I think people in Virginia understand that, you know, students of color and those with disabilities were being disproportionately yes. the, the, the recipients of a lot of discipline from the right. school and, and, and put into the criminal justice system as juveniles. That is correct. And so we knew that because the data showed us that. Right. And so I think the outreach that Fairfax County did in bringing members of the community represented many groups. It did. That yes. had uh, an interest in this probably led to a very great outcome and, and just more robust details in the policy than probably the state's model. It, it is. That's why we provided a state out, a copy of our model yeah. and they've decided to use that. And now other jurisdictions can use that as their model because our original policy um, had a lot of legal terms in it. It's right. sort of difficult to understand. So now anyone can read it and know exactly what it states. And one of the other things we're doing around discipline and working with the school is uh, we're going to do four forums around, uh, I think the title that they want to use is, I can't think of the name right now, but what we're doing is talking about and walking you through the in, entire discipline process. Okay. So if your child gets in trouble, you'll know who to contact. 
you know, what steps are being taken. And this resulted from the fact that we're seeing a lot of parents, even though they read the school roles and responsibilities yeah. manual, the well, student, no, they student, sign it. They, they don't sign read it. it. Students' rights and responsibilities. Yes, it's it's a lot, and I'm you know, and there's a lot of forms at the beginning of the school year. Right. I, I, I'm a parent. You're a parent. You have to turn them all back in by a certain date, and there's a ton of forms that you sign off on. And so and, you take the page and right. you sign off on it, and the yes. book goes somewhere else. And then and we think that a lot of this could be eliminated. The issues with parents and their concerns that their kids get in trouble and they're not notified. If we give them and walk them through the entire process. Yeah. So the school is working on that now and they're gonna have actually a flow chart to show well, them the process. Be great. So there will be four forums around the county. So if you miss one, you have three other opportunities. Oh, that's fantastic. To, to, to uh, find out what happened. And will those be um, advertised again? Will that information be on your website, communitiesoftrust.com? Definitely, and th those will also be on the school board site once we get the dates from them. Okay. So we're just trying to do as much as we can to get parents involved and let them understand exactly what is going on. You know, managing expectations is the key to everything. Everywhere and mm -hmm. any circumstance, in the workplace, in school, it's managing people's expectations mm -hmm. of what is going to happen. Right. And it seems yeah. like, you know, communities of trust is has become a catalyst and a convener of, of different groups, you, you you kind of, you're a nexus where all of these different organizations are coming to figure out a way forward together. And we're trying, we're definitely trying. And one of the other things that we'd, we've done recently, uh, we participated on the Body One Camera Policy Review. And once I get, uh, even though I'm on the panel, uh, on the uh, committee, I would send the information out to the other members of the Communities of Trust Committee, mm -hmm. which right now is a little over 30. So I get that input from them. So not only do you have me on your committee, you're also getting the input from 30 other organizations and individuals. That's fantastic. Which helps to, to make the, whatever we're reviewing a lot better because we're getting somebody else's input, not just Shirley Genrights. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, but it takes a lot to find a person who is willing to take all of those 30 different sources of information and put them into some kind of order that makes sense for people to understand what exactly the recommendations are and how they're being implemented in some mm -hmm. cohesive fashion. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, you are available to give presentations. I want to make that yes. clear to our viewers yes, too. Wow. So Rotary Clubs and Kiwanis and Communities of Faith and, and all kinds of yes. organizations you can be reached at communitiesoftrust at gmail.com. Correct. And you are available you know, as long as people get to you and you've got a spot, you'll come out. Because yes. I do think this is going to be brand new to many people watching this show. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you having us on, having me on, so I can tell them about the Communities of Trust. And the membership is open to anyone. Okay. And we meet on every Thursday of the month from 10 to 12 at the Fairfax County Government Center. Uh, we start on time and we end on time. Perfect. Perfect. So, so the website is a great place for people to find information as it's updated, yes. events that are coming up that are part of what you're involved with, the forms that are coming up. Yeah. People can reach out to you and have you come to their organization. Yes. And what if people want your assistance with other kinds of things? Is the Communities of Trust kind of open to? We are very open. You can just send us an email and even if we cannot uh, come up with a solution around our table, I guarantee you we know someone who can work on it. You know, so we don't have to work on it within the Communities of Trust Committee. We can pass it off to someone else. But one of the things I do if something is passed off, I follow up okay. to make sure someone is working it. Because I don't want someone to call us and say, well, you know, I reached out to them and I didn't hear anything back. So we try to work make sure that there are resolutions. And then if someone bring an issue to us, we say, hey, look, come on, join the communities of trust and sit around the table and tell us what, you, what do you think we should do to resolve this? Well, since this is new on my radar, I have to believe that it's going to be new on a lot of people's radar that they didn't know that there was this sort of collaborative, open community mm -hmm. that they could come to both for assistance and to find out information about how public safety is trying to engage more, you know, Things like the, the, the 
National Night Out, for instance. Right. National Night Out is something that was a long time ago a way of putting police officers into neighborhoods and mm -hmm. so that people could come out and meet them. This really takes it one step higher. It's not one night of the year. You're no. really trying to foster a long-term relationship. That's exactly right, exactly. And the community of trust model is being introduced into other uh, areas now. We'll be working with Portsmouth. Uh, really? Police chief, because she wants to establish a communities of trust committee there. Uh, we've always spoke, also spoken with Richmond uh, because they would like to establish something there. And one of the things I uh, wanted to work with the state NAACP because this is something uh, committee to engage the community and law enforcement. So if we could help through the NAACP to push it out into other areas, then that's what I would like to see done. But have that open communication with, with the communities and law enforcement, and a lot of the areas don't have that. Right, so this is basically a model. Just this like, is a model, yes. So yes. You, it can be replicated in any other community. Yes, that is correct. But it is nice to work through, um, because there are so many organizations, like there's a Virginia Association of School Superintendents, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a Virginia Association of Sheriffs, I believe. Exactly. All of these organizations have some state organization that would make it easier to get this information out to different levels. Mm -hmm of leaders, right. schools and communities to put this model into place. Right. And actually I had an opportunity to um, speak at a, one of the commission meetings in Richmond. I'm a, on the Commission for Diversity, Equity and, and uh, Equality at, um, at the governor's level. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to talk about the Communities of Trust Committee there and what we were doing in Fairfax with restorative justice oh, yes. and the alternative accountability program, program. in mm -hmm. our courts. You know, so that was one of the areas that um, former Governor McAuliffe was interested in and he passed it on to Governor Northam who is also interested in it. So I will be working with their office and seeing how we can push this out uh, across the, the state as well. Well, I'm very proud of Fairfax County because yes. I do see us as leaders in Virginia and I really appreciate the leadership that you have shown because I think it was your vision back in 2014 yes. that got all of this ball rolling and clearly yeah. you're a very trusted individual because everybody said, we're with you, Shirley. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank it you for being on the show. And this is what you need to know about communities of trust. Get in touch with Shirley, find out about the upcoming forums, get involved.